Hello, and welcome to Differential Equations. This is lecture 14, The Annihilator Method. Last time, we're working on linear differential equations. So last time, remember that if L is a linear differential operator, then the general solution of a non-homogeneous equation, Ly equals F, is Y equals Y sub part plus Y sub home with Y sub part a particular solution, so any one solution, and y sub hum, the general solution of the homogeneous equation Ly equals zero. Right? So what we talked about last time is one way to find the particular solution is to make a good guess. Right, and we called our method of making good guesses the method of undetermined coefficients. Right, so what we did was we, we stared at the right-hand side, F. Based on what that looked like, we make a good educated guess as to what a particular solution might look like. This guess involved some undetermined coefficients. So we just plug this guess into this equation and use that to determine the coefficients. So this time, We're going to talk about another approach. Defining a particular solution. It's actually a very similar approach in that we are going to end up with some undetermined coefficients that we're going to plug in here to, to determine. What's different is that instead of making a good guess and then having undetermined coefficients, we're going to take the guesswork out of it. And, and then that way we'll be, we'll be uh, guaranteed that we can find a particular solution of the form we're trying. Okay, let's say more about this. In the annihilator method, we're given a non-homogeneous equation Ly equals F, and we want to find a particular solution. We construct a homogeneous equation let's call it curly m equals zero in such a way that solutions of ly equals f satisfy my equals zero. Right? 
is homogeneous equations are easier to solve This is progress, right? So what we're gonna do is we, we start with some equation, Ly equals F, and it's not homogeneous. So we're going to trade and make the, transform the equation into something that's homogeneous. So then that way we're making it easier, but that costs us in that we're going to trade L for M. M is going to be a higher order differential operator. And so this equation is, is a more complicated, but homogeneous equation. Okay, but then because homogeneous equations are easier to solve, uh, we're, we've made progress and we can then find the particular solution we're looking for among the uh, general solutions of this equation where we're guaranteed to, to find a particular solution. Okay, how do we find the homogeneous equation and y equal to zero. Well, we look for the differential operator L tilde that annihilates F, right? That is to say, such that L tilde of F is equal to zero. Then any solution of Ly equals F satisfies L tilde of Ly, that's the same as L tilde of F, which is equal to zero, right? So there we go, there is a homogeneous equation satisfied by all solutions of Ly equals F. Okay, so let's work out an example. All right, so this will be a simple example. Suppose we want to solve y prime minus 5y equals e to the 3t. OK, so of course, it'd be very easy to make an educated guess as to what a particular solution might look like, and then continue with the method of undetermined coefficients. But let's do it with the annihilator method. So suppose we weren't sure of what a good educated guess was. In using the annihilator method, we don't have to make any guesses. OK, so here, the operator L is d by dt minus 5. And the forcing term f of t is e to the 3t. Let's start by solving the associated homogeneous equation right? Ly equal to zero. Since L is a linear differential operator, with constant coefficients, we solve this equation using the characteristic equation r minus 5 equal to 0, 
which is the same as saying r equals five. So ly equal to zero implies y is equal to some constant times e to the five t. Okay, so next, we need to find a particular solution. Fly y equals f. Notice that, okay, so now we stare at f and we wanna find a differential operator that annihilates f, so that sends it to zero. So notice that if you take one derivative of f, you get three times e to the three t, which is the same as three times f. So if we had L tilde equal to take a derivative minus multiply by three, then L tilde of F is equal to zero. Okay, so then if L of Y is equal to E to the three T, then L tilde L of Y is equal to zero, which is the same as saying that D by DT minus three composed with D by DT minus five applied to Y is equal to zero. Okay. Here the characteristic equation is r minus three times r minus five equal to zero, which tells us that r is equal to three or r is equal to five. So the general solution of L tilde L y equal to zero is y equal to some constant times e to the 5t, call it c1, plus some constant c2 times e to the 3t. And so the particular solution we're looking for will be of the form y part equal to some constant, I'm just going to call it a, e to the 3t. Okay, so, right, so here we are guaranteed that the particular solution, right, the particular solution satisfies this equation, so it also satisfies this equation, so it has to be of this form. Right? On the other hand, we already know that anything that looks like this satisfies the homogeneous equation. So that's not going to be useful for finding a particular solution. So we're looking for solutions that look like this, but do not look like this. Right? So we can ignore the C1 e to the 5t part and just keep the other part. So we ignore the C e to the 5t part of y because we know it satisfies L of y equal to zero. Okay, so now plugging in y 
y part equals a e to the three t into l of y equal to three e to the three t. We find that a has to be equal to minus one half, right? Just like uh, what we did last class, you plug it in and then find the undetermined coefficient. So now we know what the general solution Ly equals F is, right? It's Y has to be equal to some arbitrary constant times E to the 5T minus one half E to the 3T. Okay, so that's how you use the method of the annihilator to solve this equation, right? Notice that it ended up being just like the method of undetermined coefficients, right? Once we found that the particular solution had this form, right? So in this case, we could have gone right away from seeing that the right-hand side was e to the 3t to, to knowing that we should be guessing our particular solution should be a multiple of e to the 3t, and then just finding the coefficient, right? So the annihilator method uh, for this simple equation ended up being just a longer version of the same thing. We did the, these intermediate steps to find what our particular solution should look like, and then it was just plug it in to find the coefficient, right? The difference is that here we were guaranteed that this would work, Whereas in the method of undetermined coefficients, right, we we might have had to revise our guess. Another thing I want to mention is that here for the characteristic equation, we went from this factored form to this factored form. So let me point that out explicitly. Right, so remark. The characteristic polynomial of L tilde L in this equation, this example. So here L tilde L was d by dt minus three composed with d by dt minus five, right? So we could have worked that out as d by dt squared minus eight times d by dt plus 15. And then, okay, the characteristic polynomial of this differential operator is r squared minus 8r plus 15, right? which you can then factor as r minus 3 times r minus 5. Right? So, of course, if you wanted a factored form of the polynomial, then it was making your life more difficult to multiply this out, then take the characteristic polynomial and then factor, right? Because you already had it in factored form. So the thing to notice is that this always works. If L and L tilde are linear, differential operators with constant coefficients, then the characteristic polynomial of the composition L tilde L is the product of the characteristic polynomial of L tilde and the characteristic polynomial.
Okay. Okay. Okay, and so that can save you a lot of uh, effort factoring polynomials when you're using the annihilator method. Okay, let's go ahead and write out what the annihilator method is. Right. Which you can think of as just being undetermined coefficients without guessing. Okay, so just like for undetermined coefficients, we start with a non-homogeneous linear equation with constant coefficients. And we want f to be given by the same form as for the method of undetermined coefficients. So it's given by sums and products of exponentials. sines and cosines and polynomials, then, okay, so what you do is first find a full set of linearly independent solutions of the homogeneous equation Ly equal to zero. Then find a linear constant coefficient differential operator tilde, right? You want to find one as simple as possible. Such that L tilde F is equal to zero. So it annihilates F. Right? Apply L tilde to both sides of Ly equals F, get L tilde L of Y equal to zero, right? So there we've replaced our non-homogeneous system, non-homogeneous equation with a homogeneous equation. Right? Okay. And find a full set. Linearly independent solutions of the homogeneous equation L tilde L equal to zero. Right, step five, find a particular solution. of Ly equals F as a linear combination of the solutions of four
that do not solve one, right? So you look at all of the solutions of your more complicated homogeneous system that do not solve the simple homogeneous system, right? And among those, you can find a particular solution of Ly equals f. So this step is just like undetermined coefficients, but instead of having to guess what a particular solution might look like, you know that a particular solution has to solve this system, and so it has to be one of the a linear combination of the ones you found in step four. Right. And then step six, just to realize you're done. Right. So the general solution. Of Ly equals F is Y equals Y part plus Y home with Y part found in step five and Y home found in step one. Okay, so let's work this out. Some more examples. So suppose you want to find the general solution of y double prime minus 12y prime plus 32y equal to four times cosine of 3t. Okay, so here our differential operator L would be two derivatives minus 12 times one derivative plus 32. And our forcing term is four times cosine of 3t. Okay, so step one is to um, find a full set of linearly independent solutions, the homogeneous equation, Ly equal to zero, right? This has characteristic equation r squared minus 12r plus 32 equal to zero, which we can factor as r minus four times r minus eight. So has solutions r equal to four or r equal to eight. So solutions of Ly equal to zero our linear combinations of e to the 4t and e to the 8t. Okay, step two, to find a linear constant coefficient differential operator, L tilde, as simple as possible, such that L tilde of f is equal to zero. So here f is four times cosine 3t, we want to find the simplest constant coefficient differential operator we can, such that L tilde of f is equal to zero. So notice that since f of t is four cosine three t, its derivative is 12 times sine of three t, So its second derivative is equal to, no, sorry, its derivative is minus 12 sine of 3t. So its second derivative is minus uh, 36 cosine of 3t, which we recognize as minus 9 times f. So L tilde equal to take two derivatives and add nine works. Okay, so then step three, 
Well, step three is just to notice that if L y is equal to F, then L tilde of L y is equal to zero, which in this case is L tilde is d by dt squared plus nine times d by dt squared minus 12 d by dt plus 32 right, applied to y is equal to zero. Okay, then step four is to solve this homogeneous equation. Right, so L tilde L y equal to zero. As characteristic equation r squared plus nine times r minus four times r minus eight equal to zero, right? Which have solutions, has solutions r equal to plus minus three i, r equal to four, or r equal to eight. So solutions are linear common, well, let's write out solutions of L tilde L y equal to zero are linear combinations of elements in the set e to the 4t, e to the 8t, sine of 3t, Cosine three t. Okay, step five is to find a particular solution of L y equals f as a linear combination of the solutions in four that don't solve one. Right. So in four, we found this set of uh, solutions of L tilde L y equal to zero. So we know that e to the 4t and e to the 8t solve ly equal to zero. So there's an would not be useful for finding a solution to ly equals f, because of course, if you plug them into the left-hand side, you get zero, right? So I mean, since the set, we can ignore this, we can ignore this, and we should only focus on these. So we can find y sub part, so linear combination, say a times cosine three t plus b times sine of three t. Okay, how we do that is just like in the method of undetermined coefficients. So now we just plug it in to the left hand side. L of y part, right? When y part has this form. Well, we know it's the second derivative, right? So the second derivative of this would be minus nine times um, a cosine three t plus b sine of three t, right? Then minus 12 times the first derivative. So here that would be minus 12 times minus three a sine of three t plus three B cosine of three T, right? And then plus 32 times the original function. So A cosine three T plus B sine of three T, right? And we want that to equal four times cosine of three T. Right. So if you plug in and do the algebra, it turns out that that has solution given by A is 92 over 1825. B is minus 144 over 1825. And so step six, we can say B solution. of L y equals F is y of t equal to our particular solution, right? So this is 
92 over 1825 times cosine of 3t minus 144 over 1825 times sine of 3t plus the general solution to the homogeneous equation, which we found in part one. So it would be an arbitrary constant times e to the 4t plus an arbitrary constant times e to the 8t. Okay, and that's the general solution to this equation. So let me say again, it's just like the method of undetermined coefficients. In fact, once we got to step five, it was the method of undetermined coefficients. We had this particular solution. We needed to just determine the coefficients, which we did by plugging into the equation we wanted to solve and then solving for the coefficients. Right? So the difference with the annihilator method is that you had all of these steps in, in between your equation and finding the coefficients. And these steps make it so that it's not an educated guess that there will be a particular solution of this form. We're guaranteed that there is a particular solution of this form, and you just have to find the coefficients. So it's just taking the guessing out of the method of undetermined coefficients. Let's do another example. Suppose we want to solve y double prime plus 4y prime plus 4y equals 5e e to the minus 2t minus e to the 3t. So here L is given by take two derivatives <clears throat> plus four times take one derivative plus four and f of t is five times e to the minus two t minus e to the three t. Okay. So step one, we want to solve the associated homogeneous equation. So Ly equal to zero here. As characteristic equation, r squared plus four r plus four equal to zero. I can factor that as r plus two squared. Right, so this has root r equal to minus two with multiplicity two. So solutions of Ly equal to zero are linear combinations of e to the minus 2t and t times e to the minus 2t. OK, step two, we want to find as simple as possible, a differential operator that annihilates the right-hand side. So here, notice that since e by dt plus 2 annihilates 5e to the minus 2t and e by dt minus 3 annihilates e to the 3t, well, and, and hence minus e to the 3t. We can take L tilde to be the product of these two. And it will annihilate. the sum of these two functions.
which is f. Okay, step three. The equation Ly equals f leads to the equation L tilde L y equal to zero, right, which we can write as d by dt plus two times d by dt minus three times L, which was d by dt squared plus four d by dt plus four applied to y is equal to zero. Okay, so this gives us another homogeneous equation, and we solve that one. So the characteristic equation, well, let's write it the same way as before. L tilde L y equal to zero has characteristic equation r plus two times r minus three times r squared plus four, r plus four equal to zero, which we can rewrite as r plus two cubed times r minus three. So that means that our solutions are r equal to minus two with multiplicity three and r equal to three with multiplicity one. So solutions of L tilde Ly equal to zero Our linear combinations of e to the minus 2t, t times e to the minus 2t, e squared e to the minus 2t, and e to the 3t. Okay, step five. we can find a particular solution, right? So remember what we need to do now is we're going to take all of the solutions of L tilde L Y equal to zero, right? Which don't also solve L Y equal to zero, right? So in this case, it's really simple because this set is a subset of this one. So all we need to do is ignore the parts of this set that are already here. Right, so we ignore e to the minus 2t and t times e to the minus 2t, and we should take a linear combination of whatever's left. So we'll take a times t squared e to the minus 2t plus b times e to the 3t. Okay, so now it's just like in the method of undetermined coefficients. Plugging in L applied to Y part, we get, right? So remember L is this operator. So if you take two derivatives, you would end up with two A times E to the minus two T minus eight A T E to the minus two T plus four a t squared e to the minus two t plus nine b e to the three t, right? Then plus four times when you take one derivative, so that would be two a t e to the minus two t minus two a t squared e to the minus two t, plus three e, e to the three t, right? Plus 
four times the original function, so a t squared e to the minus 2t plus b e to the 3t. Okay, and so if you work that out, you get 2a e to the minus 2t plus 25b e to the 3t. Right? And then we want that to equal the right hand side, write our function f, right? So 5e to the minus 2t minus e to the 3t. Right. So we need a should be equal to 5 over 2. And B should be equal to minus 1 over 25. And so then, step six. The general solution to Ly equals F is Y equals our particular solution. So 5 over 2 times E to the minus, no, times T squared e to the minus 2t minus 1 over 25 e to the 3t. And then the general solution that we found in part 1, so plus an arbitrary constant e to the minus 2t plus an arbitrary constant t e to the minus 2t. OK, so again, once you got to step 5, Right, and you knew what form the particular solution had, then it was just like the method of undetermined coefficients. Right now, notice that here, if you had started with this right hand side and you wanted to apply the method of undetermined coefficients, you would have in initially guessed some linear combination of e to the minus 2t and e to the 3t. Right, so you probably would have guessed a e to the minus 2t plus b e to the 3t, right? And only once you've guessed that, you would have noticed that the your guess of e to the minus 2t already solves the homogeneous equation, right? The associated homogeneous equation. So then you would have had to modify your initial guess by multiplying e to the minus 2t by t squared, right? And so then you would have guessed this and then followed out in the same way. The difference, again, between the annihilator method and the method of undetermined coefficients is that instead of having to guess this, we solved, and then we were guaranteed that there was a particular solution of this form. Okay, so let's finish by making a little table of common annihilators. All right, so how to find the operator L tilde. So if f of t has the form then its simplest annihilator is, actually, maybe it's a good moment to stop, just say something about taking the simplest annihilator. So suppose that over here, say in this problem, instead of using this annihilator, we had used something more complicated. Because of course, if this annihilates your function f, then you could always multiply this L tilde by some other differential operator, and it would still annihilate f, right? So you can always make the annihilator more complicated. So what would have happened if we had? Well, if we had made L tilde more complicated, then of course, this homogeneous equation would have been more complicated. 
And we would have ended up with a larger set of linearly independent set of solutions to our homogeneous equation. So then when we had plugged in over here, our particular solution, our candidate for a particular solution would have been more complicated. It would have had more terms, right? Because we would have had more solutions to our homogeneous equation. We still would have ended up with this particular solution, but, right? It's just that th in solving for the coefficients, we would have had more coefficients to solve for. They would have all ended up zero, but it would have been more complicated. So that's why you always want to find the simplest possible annihilator L tilde to use so that this equation is as simple as possible. This set is as small as possible. And you don't do unnecessary work. Okay. So if f of t has to form, say you have an exponential e to the sigma t, then its simplest annihilator would be L tilde d by dt minus sigma, right? If f of t was cosine omega t or sine omega t, then L tilde would be d by dt squared plus omega squared. If f of t were a polynomial of degree k, then you can take as L tilde d by dt to the k plus 1. Okay. So what if you have f of t is a polynomial of degree k times an exponential e to the sigma t, then what you can do is take d by dt minus sigma and raise that to the k plus 1. Similarly, if you have a polynomial of degree k times cosine omega t or polynomial of degree k times sine omega t, then you can take for L tilde d by dt squared plus omega squared raised to the k plus 1. If you have f of t equal to e to the sigma t times cosine omega t or e to the sigma t sine omega t, you can take d by dt minus sigma squared times plus omega squared. And then if you have a polynomial of degree k times e to the sigma t times cosine omega t, or polynomial of degree k times e to the sigma t times sine of omega t, you can take d by dt minus sigma squared plus omega squared and then raise all of that to the k plus 1. Right? OK, and then finally, if f of t is a sum of two functions, f1 of t plus f2 of t, and L1 tilde, L2 tilde, are annihilators with constant coefficients of F1 and F2, respectively. Then the composition of the two, so take L tilde equal to L1 tilde composed with L2 tilde, that annihilates F. 
right? So if you have the sum of two terms in this table, then you can just take the product of this corresponding annihilators and that will annihilate the function you have. Okay, we'll stop there, pick it up from there next time.